he's doesn't love being around a lot of people. Like he's just one of those people that like wants to be home, wants to be alone, is happy to have a clo- a uniform. You know, like he's got 20 different blue shirts, you yeah. know, five Relatable. different blue yeah, five different blue blazers, <laughs> five different blue sweaters, you know, five pairs of jeans and he just kind of, you know, rotates them. Welcome to the Otter Costume Podcast. I'm Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I am Spencer Williams. Hey, Elizabeth. I'm glad you have light and power. I me too. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It was I was worried for a couple days there. (laughs) Elizabeth has been living in a dark cave for the past week as storms have been ravaging the east side of the country. Um, I had no idea any of this was happening, if I'm being real, but Yeah, Tuesday was not great. Didn't have power, didn't have power. Friday, things got better. But then, you know, the Microsoft thing happened. So work yeah. was wild. <laughs> <laughs> just you you really lived a life knowing what's like to just, you know, have no power, no electronics. Well, you, uh, I guess you had your Nintendo Switch, though, so you survived. I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Because my wife, I couldn't have done very much. My Wi-Fi was out. Oh, yeah, that's true. (laughs) Dreamlight Valley isn't fun if you can't connect to the Internet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's been crazy. You didn't really miss much. It's been really hot, but I'm sure you figured that out. Uh, Yeah. But we did get some good news because the Emmy nominations came out, which has been fun. We love Emmy nominations. And, you know, Elizabeth and I are going to get together soon and just do an episode only about Emmy nominations, one of our bonus episodes. So look out for that soon. But uh, Elizabeth, some good stuff happened. Like, for example, in Outstanding Period Costumes, the Gilded Age was nominated. And I just feel like you and I need to take a victory lap on that. Yes, (laughs) we called it. Finally, I feel like this makes up for season one. And... Uh, Shogun was nominated, Carlos Rosario, whom yes. I love, Palm Royale, The New Look, Winning Time, all great shows. Um, even more period costumes, Feud, Capote versus The Swans that Lou Eric and Lee Katz Nelson did. I haven't seen Feud, but I've been dying to see this show. Same, but like the, all the pictures I've seen, I'm like, why is this gorgeous? Like, why is it this gorgeous? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lou Eirich is one of the greatest, I just have he to is. say. Yeah. Um, Griselda, Lessons in Chemistry, Mary and George, Ripley, which I really want to see. I love a black and white production, so I've been wanting to get into that. That's on Netflix. Uh, outstanding Fantasy Sci-Fi Costumes, my favorite category, might be yours too. I'm not sure. Are you a period or a fantasy person? It 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 wavers. This year, definitely fantasy. I've seen most of what's on here. <laughs> well, you have Ahsoka with, you know, Shauna Terpsik was nominated, which I'm so happy about. And yeah. E. Alcala really was working hard to get to make this happen. Um, so I'm so happy for them. Echo Fallout with Amy Westcott. Yes. Loki with our girl Christine Wada, who I'm so stoked for. And of course, what we do in the shadows with our good friend Laura Montgomery. I'm so happy that show keeps getting nominated. Getting into contemporary hacks with Kathleen Felix Hager. I haven't seen season three yet, but I'm so excited. I love hacks. Do you watch hacks? I don't, but I I know it's one of your favorites. You have to get into it. Um, Only Murders in the Building with Dana Cova Rubius, which we're getting ready to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The Bear, The Crown made it into Contemporary this year, which is interesting. I haven't seen or finished the last season yet, but I guess it's considered Contemporary. Elizabeth's face I, is showing a lot of emotions. I would not have considered it contemporary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just like an Emmy's rule once you get to like a certain, you know, year. Oh, well, because like half of it was in the 90s. The second half was split between like the late aughts and the early 2010s, I guess. Yeah, so there you go. I think that's <sighs> like the Emmy rule, but I don't know. We'll... 
we'll look into it before we get into our Emmys costume episode. And uh, but I have to shout out Christina Flannery from the Righteous Gemstones was nominated. Yes. And I'm super stoked on that. Uh, then we have Outstanding Contemporary Costumes for a Limited or Anthology Series, American Horror Story Delicate, Baby Reindeer. I've heard so much about the show. I haven't started it yet, but... I know. I wasn't going to watch it until the nomination came through, and I was like, wait, what is happening in this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be good. Uh, Fargo, The Regime, and True Detective Night Country with our friend Alex Bovaird. I've yes. been dying to get into that show. I just haven't, but... And now I have I, to. I started watching the first season when it first came out and was like genuinely creeped out. So I never watched anything else. <laughs> and <laughs> well, now I feel it's been on for so long. I'm like, I feel like I need to like go back and watch all of this. Right. Yeah. Well, apparently it's a really good show. I'm super happy for all of the nominees. I feel like, you know, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with how it went. So I'm excited to get into it uh, with you in a couple weeks here. I, I cannot wait. But Elizabeth, before we get into our main episode today, I have some reviews to read to you. <gasps> Yay! Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, we got quite a few Apple podcast reviews to read. And, you know, I really hope that all of you will also head to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star text review so we can read it on the episode because it just warms our hearts. And who doesn't want to warm Elizabeth and mine? Minds is hearts is. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. So, uh, and sorry I, if I get your usernames wrong, uh, but Mia's Ma Melody uh, said, left five stars, and the title is My Favorite Show. Entertaining, informative, and well produced. It is clear these folks are passionate about costumes, and I am passionate about this podcast. Nobody is doing it like them. I look forward to every episode and greatly appreciate the lengths which they go to research to discuss each topic. The interviews are all superb. Hands down, this is my favorite show. Recommended for anyone interested in costume design or otherwise. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was a so fun sweet. one. so sweet. Passionate about this podcast. I love that. I need that tattooed. <laughs> I, I know. We, we get matching tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> Passionate about this podcast. Oh my gosh. I'm going to look like the illustrated man from what was it, Furiosa, where it just has oh my God. reviews yeah, 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 written yeah. all over myself. <laughs> yeah. Our next five star review says Favorite industry podcast. I love this podcast. They do real well rounded deep dives into the designs. I love the episodes where they bring designers and illustrators, etc., as guests. They ask really insightful questions. Keep them coming. Thank you. Oh, we will. Yeah. So for as long as we can. Yeah. I mean, until <laughs> we pass out. We're still yeah. going. We have the rest of the, this year planned out. So Yeah. I'm have, excited for the rest of this year. Yeah, we have some good stuff coming. We uh, actually have our spooky season planned. So it's looking tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm real excited. <laughs> and the last one that I'll read for today, uh, five stars from Just Call Me E, says, love this podcast. I work in TV and film in the costume department. It's not every day you get a whole podcast show that celebrates the hard work costume designers and their crew do to help bring your favorite movies and TV shows to life. Thank you for all your hard work. And oh, thank you for giving us something to talk about. Right. I mean, we do this because we love all of your work and, you know, we just are here to support and be that voice and just gush over incredible costume design. So if you keep them coming, we'll keep them coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, don't forget to leave us a five star text review so we can read them on our future episodes. And I have one more thing for you, Elizabeth, and you'll mm -hmm. get a kick out of this. So <laughs> I don't know how I missed this on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So after our Bridgerton episode, I did a poll for all of our Instagram listeners. And I, you know, we talked a little bit about Benedict Bridgerton and his, mm -hmm. his situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Lady Tilly Arnold and her man, Slash friend. Don't Bad know what's situation happening. situationship. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole mess. Basically, they were in a thruple for a whole two episodes. Spoiler yeah. alert if you haven't seen Bridgerton. Sorry. 
So I asked, uh, I set up a poll and these are the choices. Uh, should Benedict go live his life as in, you know, go celebrate his new by awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, the second option was should Benedict get together with Lady Tilly? Don't walk away from this strong, independent woman who he clearly has a thing for. And the last option was, I wanted more thruple action. Where was I the thruple more action? more thruple action. <laughs> <laughs> and Elizabeth, the results are in. 43% mm -hmm. of our Instagram listeners said Benedict should go live his life. Meaning he needs to go explore his new sexuality. He with... needs to go find a new thruple. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 43%. Uh, second place was 38% that wanted more thruple action. Yes. 19% <laughs> said he needs to get with Lady Tilly Arnold. No. <laughs> See, okay. I have to say... I and Elizabeth got... did not vote for this, by the way. I checked I to make sure she didn't skew the polls. It, so I have, I've had so much going on in my life that I put a time limit on my Instagram. Good. Just because like it, you can get lost in it and lose precious time. Mm -hmm. So I, that's how I miss this. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't see it. I, and I wish we had gotten to talk about Lady Tilly a little bit more. Yeah. on our episode it was just there was too much there was too there much, was too much. Yeah. <laughs> but she was such a cool character and i was like girl just enjoy your men yeah. like you are an independent wealthy woman who doesn't have to answer to anybody enjoy these two gorgeous men <laughs> who are lavishing attention on you yeah <laughs> like just go for it i don't know why she wanted to try and have the relationship talk with Benedict. <laughs> like. Yeah. So I said when we did the episode with Chloe that I felt like Benedict should have just got together with Tilly, you know, and just kept going. But I've had a few weeks to sit back and ponder this. I wanted more thruple action. That's just like the plain truth. I wanted more thruple action. I would have liked maybe season four to be half thruple action. And then he realizes he wants to be a Lady Tilly. I just want to yeah. play it out a little bit. Let's have some fun. I don't think Lady Tilly is the person he gets within the books. So who knows? Oh. But I'm like, I would have loved them. Like, yeah, season four, the thruple. And it's like that man could have gotten Benedict to like back into his painting because he's clearly like a patron of the arts. Mm, like because mm -hmm. Benedict seems a little bit lost this season. Yeah. Because he he feels like he got into art school unfairly through his brother's donation, which I didn't realize he full stopped quit painting. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Such a bummer. Like what? Everyone acts like he was never doing anything with his life. <laughs> 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 so i would have loved them to have like a really like good like boosting each other up and like getting benedict on a path and whether they stay together or not like i just would have liked to see that like people helping people and loving each other i think that would have been nice <laughs> it would have been nice clearly we are very passionate about this and if you didn't listen to our bridgerton episode <laughs> right after this, I suggest you go back because yes. it's a good one. I've actually listened to it a couple of times just because it's it's it funny and it makes me smile. <laughs> um, and, and as we oh, said I earlier, it's been dark times. So a little Bridgerton is some great escapism. <laughs> I have to say I've reflected upon the episodes. Oh. <laughs> and from all the information I've gotten in, I was an idiot. How did I not notice that Francesca was totally... <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, the <laughs> I need to call Chloe. <laughs> I was, I was just, I don't know where my head was when I was first watching that. Oh, wow. But I was like, oh my gosh, I'm dumb. Like the, uh, this you, is, the two of you were right. The two of you were right. News. First of all, I don't think you've ever said I've been right on this podcast. So <laughs> this is a great oh. moment. <laughs> Uh, I mean, every now and then, Spencer, you're yeah. bound to a broken get clock right. is right twice a year. Yeah, um, I will continue to double down on my uh, 
dowager <laughs> lady Bridgerton. That's fine. We'll work on that Opinion, season four. Though. But no, that's yeah. I'm so glad you came to that realization. That's Thank <laughs> so you. funny. Thank you. I think we need to call Chloe after this. Uh, but before <laughs> we go too much into a deep dive on Bridgerton, we need to yeah, direct yeah. our attention to a more contemporary time yes. in New York City where there's not a lot of throuples, but there's lots of murders. They have my favorite pl- platonic throuple. They, oh, right. It is a throuple. What am I saying? Yeah. It is a throuple. It's just not the kind <laughs> we're talking about. We are talking about only murders in the building. Yes. Season three. Yeah. This, this is one of your favorite shows. It is. I... I think I waited till season one was all out because I I'd been like seeing things about it and like seeing all the photos and it's like when you see that it's like the costume design the fashion in that show like brilliant yeah so good and I was like okay I should go watch it. and I like a murder mystery yeah who doesn't and yeah and it's like the show was definitely like not quite was that what I was anticipating it was so much better. It was so much better. And it's like you just get hooked. You fall in love with these characters and the costume design is top notch. Like it's hard to get Mm. better. Mm, mm, It's mm. hard to get better than what (laughs) what is happening in only murders in the building. That is a ringing endorsement. Uh, Yeah, I've so I've seen bits and pieces of season one and two and I've saw season three because, you know, unfortunately, I kind of saw this in the tropical storm that is emmy season yeah so i am kind of like bits and pieces of like every show right now but liz has been trying to get me to watch the show for a while and i'm so glad that i finally got to jump in because it is really so good it's so funny and the amount of cameos in the show i mean it's like wild just like casually like meryl streep will show up you know just like (laughs) it's really insane the amount of uh, talented people on this series I never thought I'd see. Oh, I guess Meryl Street has been in TV shows before, but like, I like, I don't know. I don't see Meryl Street is like a, a movie star to me. Yeah. So like, I never expect her to be in like a TV show, and it's just oh, she's so charming in this show. So charming. She's so charming. I think everyone on this cast, this crew, is charming. It's really been a great show, which is why, uh, you know, it's been nominated for like a million gazillion. Uh, Emmys, including costume design, which we'll get into. Uh, But first, let me give a little summary of Only Murders in a Building. Yes, Spencer. Only Murders in a Building follows three strangers who share an obsession with true crime and suddenly find themselves wrapped up in one. When a death occurs inside their exclusive Upper West Side apartment building, the trio suspects murder and employs their precise knowledge of true crime to investigate the truth. As they record a podcast of their own to document the case, the three unraveled the complex secrets of the building, which stretch back years. As we get to season three, we have a leading man down. Just as Oliver returns to Broadway, Ben Glenroy collapses on stage, leading Charles, Oliver, and Mabel to piece together the show's first days with a suspicious cast and crew to determine if foul play was involved. And that is only murders in the building. If you have not watched Only Murders in the Building, get to Hulu. Get to Hulu. Watch, watch all three seasons. Elizabeth, if a murder happened in our apartment building when we lived together, oh we my gosh. Would've... Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? And Avisha would have been over every day. <laughs> <laughs> we would have started a podcast years we, ago. <laughs> we would have. You imagine us? We would have bought binoculars and we would we would we probably would have gotten like a a DNA DNA swab kit. Oh yeah, I'm all online. about it. I would just I would be starting a podcast if someone left their laundry in the laundry room too long, like <laughs> let alone a murder. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, we would have been insufferable if that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and let's go behind the costumes. We have creators John Hoffman and Steve Martin, and our incredible costume designer dana Covarrubias. you will know her work from broad city inside amy schumer master of none claws rami and babes you will also know her from her work on every single season 
of only murders in the building. She is the only costume designer the show has ever had. And she has received an Emmy nomination for every single season and is nominated this year for Outstanding Contemporary Design. Yeah, Dana does not miss. And I mean, everyone knows it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Literally every single season of the show has been nominated for its costume design. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. That's awesome. I don't, I don't feel like that happens very often. I mean, not off, no, at least not. I mean, usually maybe it starts to happen like season two. No, from the very beginning, only murders knew was doing, uh, Elizabeth, as you know, uh, maybe the, the listeners do not know, but I actually got to meet Dana and talk about the costumes for season three. Uh, this happened not too long ago. Unfortunately, Elizabeth was not able to attend. Maybe, maybe the storm wiped her power away. I don't remember, but, um, (laughs) but Elizabeth still sent me her questions. So we had a great time breaking down season three, especially, but we do kind of talk about the characters throughout the series as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, so I hope you all just get to sit back and enjoy, It's a great conversation. And when it's over, Elizabeth and I will come back and play our favorite game. Yes, everyone enjoy Spencer's interview with Dana Covarrubias. Hi, this is Dan, audio engineer of the podcast, here to let you know that if you wanted to support the show, you can head over to theartofcostume.com slash podstore. There you can buy some awesome TeePublic merch with the podcast logo, such as a shirt, coffee mug, stickers, and of course, a baby onesie. Thanks for all your support. to finally welcome costume designer Dana Kovarubias. Hey Dana, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Good. I'm so excited to talk to you. I feel like I've been hearing everyone tell me to watch Only Murders in a Building ever since it came out and I'm just so excited to finally make it happen because uh, the listeners have just been dying for this episode so Yay. I'm well, I'm so thrilled. <laughs> that's that's so good to hear. Yeah, we um we are in the midst of season 4 right now and um so I'm trying to, you know, remember everything from season three, as is always, we always do the interviews like a year later and it's yeah. always, like, oh God, how do I, you know, remember everything, but, right. um, but yeah, I'm so excited to talk with you. Well, good. I'll, I'll guide you through it too. And my co-host Elizabeth is actually like a diehard fan and she sent a lot of questions Yay. as well. So we're going to okay. get into all the specifics, <laughs> but first, like I was saying, you know, I've been looking forward to talking to you for a while because this show is just so successful. I mean, you've picked up two Emmy nominations so far in this series. So what has that been like? That must be a huge <laughs> whirlwind. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of knew when I started the job that it would get a lot of attention because of our unbelievable cast and, um, and the writing, you know, I, I just knew the story was going to be appealing to people and people are all about, you know, murder mystery and, you know, crime dramas and all of that. And obviously comedy and having, Steve and uh, Marty and Selena. It's like, how can you kind of go wrong there? Um, <laughs> you can't. Yeah. So I knew it would. Get, <laughs> how can we resist? Would, right, right. <laughs> I knew it would get a lot of attention, but I, you know, I didn't. You know, when you're costume designing, you kind of you go from the script and you you have your meetings and you do your mood boards and you think about your inspiration and you're doing. You know, I do it. You know, based on character and I'm and I'm thinking about that more than anything else. And then when it gets the attention that it's been getting, it's just. Um, it's just very exciting and it's, it's very, you know, I'm very grateful and, but it's not something you expect, you know, it's not, you're just yeah. kind of head down doing the work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. It's been, it's been, it has been a whirlwind and, um, and I'm, yeah, I just feel very lucky. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's great to follow along too. I mean, every time a new season comes out, I'm like, Oh, what does she have in store for us this time? So I'm always very excited. Um, so within that same vein, talking about the series as a whole, you're from New York city, right? Actually, I grew up in Texas. 
Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Like Selena and I have that in common. We both grew up in Texas and we both are half Mexican. Right. So we like had that little thing in common. Um, but, but I came to New York when I was 17 to start going to school. So I've been in oh, wow. New York for over 20 years. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So yeah. I, mean, I talk with my friends at Makeover Montage quite a bit, Marie and Blair, about how we always have co-envy living in Los Angeles. And I think your show is suspect number one in that co-envy. Yes. Um, so how has your experience living in New York informed only murders in the building? Oh, I mean, everything it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's as a costume designer living in New York, I always say it's like, it's the best research, uh, you know, you can really have living here because just everywhere you go, you see amazing, you know, people and, and not just like, you know, yes, there's amazing fashion here, but it, it's really just, um, character, you know, like you see right. these like characters everywhere and it's so <laughs> yeah. fun to kind of hone in on what that person's look is and you know you're on the subway or you know you're walking down the street and you see someone and you're like wow they put that with that and those shoes and that's such an interesting combination and who are they and where are they going and, and you know I think it just gets your costume designer brain kind of ticking in a way yeah. that it probably wouldn't maybe in other cities um and of course you have all different kinds of people living here of all different you know, socioeconomic backgrounds and um, coming from all different countries. And it's just such a melting pot in New York and always has been. And I think that really informs costume design in general and definitely specifically on this show. Um, but yeah, when I first came to New York, I was living on the um, Upper West Side where our show takes place. So I mm -hmm. lived there for five years, maybe. So, and, and you know, and then now since then, I've lived almost in every borough. <laughs> I've lived in something like, 10 different apartments or something since Jeez. my 20 years of being in New York. <laughs> and um, so I've seen every borough, I've seen every kind of person I've, you know, studied all the people. So, um, so I feel like that gives me a really uh, great advantage when I design New York city based shows. Yeah. And then specifically with only murders, you know, I had a really, you know, I had a lot of time to study the upper West side people. And I, I worked in college, I worked at a wine bar that was across from the Met Oh. And, and so Jealous. I would, all of our customers were like pre and post, you know, met, uh, people, you know, going, going to the opera or going to the ballet. And, and I think I just really loved how elegant everyone, you know, everyone's so fashionable and elegant. And I think that's, that's the kind of look that I wanted for the Arconia, yeah. this kind of like old New York elegance, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think everything Everything about the show has been helped by the fact that I've lived in New York for so long, for sure. Right. I mean, talking about the best research ever, just walking yeah. down the street is just like a, you know, oh, yeah. a homework assignment sometimes. Yeah, but in the, co the coat specifically, like the, you see, I mean, it's it's winter. I think people don't realize growing up in Texas, of course, it was just a, a shock for me um, that <laughs> yeah. winter is nine months long here. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, kind of, you're kind of wearing a coat for nine months. Yeah, nine months. And you have to, because of that, and it's not, there are different kinds of cold, you know, there's mm -hmm. like really, really cold. And then there's like little tiny cold days. So it's like, you want to have a bunch of different coats yeah. for every kind of, you know, weather there might be. Um, I personally have probably two closets worth of coats. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, you gotta have your it's coming back. You gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You gotta have your raincoats, you gotta have your trench coats, you have to have your puffer coat, you have to have your like more elegant, longer wool coat, you know. So I kind of thought that, uh, you know, our characters would have that as well. Right. Um, it's become, we always joke that it's a coat, it's a show about coats. <laughs> the best show about coats, if I might <laughs> say so. Uh, so I'm excited to get into season three, as there is a lot of great stuff going on here, um, as this season heavily revolves around Broadway musicals. So before we get into the specifics, I have to imagine, you know, having this experience now living in New York City, uh, that must have been quite exciting to you to bring Broadway into the series. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, very exciting when I found out that that was what this season's kind of main arc was going to be about. And um, I, growing up, did musicals. Um, I think I did a production of well, I don't know if it was a musical, but it was something called, it was a production of Stone Soup when I was like 
four or five. And then, and then, um, I did stone and, soup too. I could sing did? a song to you, but I'm not going Stop to, it. that'd be yeah, horrible. That's amazing. Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah, very young, very young, you yeah. know, and then like, and I think I did like Annie get your gun in like sixth grade or so, you know, and I just had the theater bug my whole childhood. And, yeah. um, and then was a total theater nerd all throughout high school and college and went to school for performance and switched kind of like got interested in costume design while I was in college. But, um, it's like the most yeah. easy transition, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I, I realized after years of doing it that I actually like hated kind of being in front of people. And the part of theater that I really enjoyed was creating the character. Yeah. You know, I was like, I love, I love the camaraderie of the crew. Like I love being part of a crew and I loved creating character, doing all the research behind creating character. And so that like, so when I sort of got more into costume design, I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly yeah. what I'm looking for. Um, but yes, I love musicals. Whole childhood was like totally, you know, listened to Rent probably 5,000 times and annoyed yeah. my parents um, endlessly. <laughs> Um, so, yes, I was very excited to um, use that as inspiration for this whole season and kind of pick and choose which musicals I thought, you know, would be fun to use as um, inspiration for the costumes this season. Yeah, that's that's so exciting. I mean, it's like the costume designer's dream. Um, yeah. I can't believe you brought up Stone Soup. That was such a I thought <laughs> that was I thought that was like an exclusive experience. So I need to like I, do some research, I guess. So funny. I know I like I have a vague <laughs> memory of my costume in it. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Or like like standing around the cauldron and putting yes. Oh, yes. Very in it or something. Centric. Yes, very cauldron centric. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> I'm going to chat with you after. <laughs> so season after season, everyone's talking about Selena Gomez's character, Mabel, and all of her brilliant costumes. I grew up watching Selena Gomez on Wizards Way Replace, been a fan forever. So I was just so excited to see her in this. I mean, this season, Mabel's looks uh, appear to be heavily influenced by said Broadway musicals like we were talking about. So how did this come to be and how much have you collaborated with Selena in creating her character's look? Well, every season I like to pick kind of a central influence based on, you know, what we're doing with the the writing and what the main plot line is that season. Um, so, you know, season one, it was, it was kind of very Hardy Boys, um, mm -hmm. based plot line. So that was the main inspiration for the looks. And then, oh my gosh, right. Oh, season two was sort of, there was this, um, Hitchcockian theme that we had going. So that's yeah. where we went. And then this season was musicals. So I, it's this, it's actually when I did press, I think after season one, someone asked me if, if the costumes had any sort of like, uh, mystery element in them. Um, or like uh, what's called Easter egg, you know, kind of situation. I didn't really have that season one. And I was like, well, that would be such a cool idea to incorporate into the costume design if I can kind of make a mystery within our mystery, <laughs> um, which is, uh, you know, for our audience and our fans who are watching to to know that I'm that I have some sort of inspiration and to kind of try to figure it out, you know, so on season um Two, it was, um, you know, pe I was, I told people, you know, we're, you're, you're doing Hitchcock. And so like, can you tell, like, as an audience member, can you tell as you're watching, like, which Hitchcock movie is right. a book inspired from? And so this season, we're doing the same thing, or season three, we were doing the same thing with musicals. Um, so, so yeah, almost, almost every single costume she wears in season three is inspired by a specific That's musical so cool. or kind of a combination of a musical one of the looks she wears in the beginning is kind of like a sweater vest um look that's inspired by little shop of horrors in combination with gypsy sort of mm. like mix there <laughs> um and yeah we, we i uh, caught the phantom rose on oh one yes of them. yeah <laughs> yeah there was a great, that was my favorite one i think the phantom yeah. opera look that she wears to a date night it's like a beautiful rose uh -huh. velvet very like real dark romance you know kind of um dress and yeah, and yeah, so it was just fun to um, choose all of that. And, and yeah, I mean, Selena's like, she's just so game. She's like, she's very, I think she, she the most input she offers typically when we're in a fitting is like, this feels very Mabel or this does not, you know, like, I think yeah. she's just so honed in on who Mabel is that when, when we'll put something on, sometimes I'll see what she's wearing in real life. And I get inspired by that and I'll. Mm -hmm 
try to mix that in a little bit. And then sometimes she's like, she'll be like, no, this is too Selena, you know, like this feels yeah. too Selena, not able. <laughs> so we, we really try to, um, you know, make a distinction there, but yeah, she's just so, you know, she's really just lets me and my team do what we do and is great in that way. Yeah. yeah. That's so exciting. And then we have these two legendary comedians that you're working with, uh, you know, just Martin short and Steve Martin, uh, so in season three, Oliver, by the way, Oliver is a fashion icon. I'm just going to get that out of the way for the <laughs> short amount of time I've been watching this show. I'm already like, I, this is what I want to be. Um, so Oliver returns to Broadway. And uh, so tell me about design costumes for Oliver and how that may or may not have evolved as we got into season three, once he returns back to Broadway. Yeah. Um, Oliver, oh, he is. Yeah, he's. It's hard to pick from all your children, of course, but like I have right. to, I do, I do have to say that Oliver is my favorite person. To design, <laughs> You're like, know? I won't choose, but since I you didn't choose, ask, I will choose. Is, <laughs> yeah, I will choose. It is Oliver. Um, uh, he's just so fun. Yeah. And I mean, there's so much to, to work with there character wise, you know, the way he's scripted, he's this very tragic character who's not afraid of fashion and not afraid of standing out and wants to stand out. And um, that's just very exciting, you know, to kind of work with that as a costume designer. Um, and yeah, I would say, you know, what, what we established season one is that, you know, he's this, you know, man who had a heyday, you know, back in like the 80s, 90s, directing for Broadway and had a lot of money then and kind of, well, maybe, a, you know, a, a medium amount of money blew yeah. it all. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, he's in like very serious credit card debt. Um <laughs> And he, you know, but so he has these luxury items, he has these luxury pieces, but they're all from like the nineties and the early right. aughts, basically. Um, so for him, we do a lot of shopping on the real real because it's kind of perfect mm. because it's like secondhand luxury items. That, yeah. So we just have to look for stuff that looks a little more like, you know, nineties or early aughts for him. Um, and you know, his, his main goal is that he's, he's always playing a role. He's always trying to, um, you know, be, be what the other person wants him to be in any given situation. So he, he's really um, loud with his, with his wardrobe and we love to mix patterns and color and um, we just have so much fun with him. And then specifically this season, you know, he's getting back into the director role, like you said. So we, we tried to focus more on kind of a more casual Oliver look where he's a little bit more like push the sleeves up, Let's get down to business. Yeah. Um, let's whip these actors into shape. Um, you know, he's a little, he's in a theater all the time or he's, you know, they're rehearsing at the building um, and um, he's in rehearsal mode, you know? Right. So it's like a bit of a different look than his he's like, work mode. Yeah, It's a work mode. Yeah. So it's yeah. a bit of a different look than his like three piece suit kind of thing that he, you know, will wear a lot of times. And then uh, Steve Martin's character, Charles, he, I mean, first of all, what an amazing actor. So what was it like working with Steve Martin? How would you describe his character's costumes in season three? He's a little um, bit harder for me to understand yeah. because he just, I mean, he yeah. always has such great style, but he's also gained into his role as well. Yeah. Yeah. So his, his main thing, you know, character wise is that he's, he, um he's kind of the opposite of Oliver. He, he doesn't like to stand out and right. he, has a lot of comfort in um in the day-to-day -day repetitiveness of things like he find, he's kind of he's doesn't love being around a lot of people like he's just one of those people that like wants to be home wants to be alone is happy to have a clothes a uniform you know like he's got 20 different blue shirts you yeah. know five different blue, yeah five different <laughs> blue blazers five different blue sweaters you know, five pairs of jeans and he just kind of, you know, rotates them. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes it easy for him. And he, you know, but he always looks good. Like he knows what looks good on him, but he just, you know, he's um, sticking to his color palette and his silhouettes that he knows um, work. And so what we've, so the, so I think character wise, what's been fun with his, his character is that we've, anytime he deviates from that, you know, does something else, it's a big choice, you know? So as the seasons have been going, really in season one, we really only did blue, white, gray, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of green, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And then now as the seasons have gone, we've gone, you know, he's really pushed, he's has these new best friends of, you know, Mabel and, um, and Oliver, and he's 
pushing himself. He's constantly pushing himself out of his comfort zone. And yeah. so we try to reflect that with his costume by adding a bit more color, adding a bit more pattern, but very, very subtly. I think in season two, we just started adding color in his hat bands. Nice. Like barely. Yeah. <laughs> like anything. <laughs> and then, um, and now in season three, we've tried to really push the color. I mean, for him. And, yeah. um, and he's, you know, now he's acting in this play that Oliver's directing, which he's, you know, he's used to doing his crime procedural that he did back in the 90s, which is a very different kind of acting than live musical performance. Right. So he's very nervous. He's very <laughs> worried about having to be in this musical and having to pull off um, the song he has to do, a patter song, which is a very, very difficult song to do. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to show that he was kind of pushing himself by adding more color. But then there are these scenes where he goes to a quote unquote white room where he kind of has these like freak out moments. <laughs> um, he, you know, it's kind of like when you're on stage, you forget your lines, you forget, you know, you have that like horrifying. Yeah. Moment. And so he goes to the white room. And then when he's in the white room, it's like all of the color is sucked out. So yeah. he's just head to toe wearing white, a white version of what he would normally wear. Um, so that was really fun. We got, you know, we made custom, we knocked off his normal hat and like made a custom white one and found oh, his so white. Good. And yeah, we had a lot of fun with that look for him. But yeah, just, he's constantly like pushing himself, like, you know, out of the comfort zone and then goes back and then. Yeah. I, I, from what I'm gathering, I just feel like Charles is just so relatable because I mean, everything you're saying about Charles, I'm like, I, I feel this way plenty yeah. of times. So that, that's really awesome. So yeah, I think we're all like, I think that's, what's fun about the show is like, we're all a little bit of each of them, you know, we're right. all, we're all little Mabel. We're all little Charles. We're yeah. Little I'm feeling very Charles today, but I'm hoping yeah. <laughs> tomorrow I'll be feeling pretty Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Oliver's like a weekend personality. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this next question was actually submitted by my co-host who really want to be here, but couldn't unfortunately, but she really wanted to talk about the musical aspect of the show as well, specifically Deaf Rattle Dazzle. Mm -hmm. um, she said the musical's costumes with their unique blend of fantasy and reality were undeniably a standout feature of the season. I was particularly enamored with the crab people. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the creative process like when designing costumes for a show within a show? Oh, it was a dream come true because I've, you know, I, I did theater in school, but then I, as soon as I got out of school, I really started working in film and TV and I um, haven't really gone back to theater. So it was very, very fun to design this version of theater for television. I'm a big sequence person. I love yeah. anything sparkly. <laughs> I have racks of clothes that are like in, in my costume stock that are just sequins. Like I just yeah. have racks that are just like, these are my sparkle racks. Yeah. In case of emergency um, sequins. In case of emergency. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. I've always loved them. And um, so I just got excited that, you know, the, the, the straight play version that we establish of Oliver's play at the beginning of the season is just called death rattle. Mm -hmm. And then he creates this, you know, redone version. That's the musical called death rattle dazzle. And when I just yeah. heard the title and, and um, I knew that, you know, plot line wise and character wise, what's happening is that he doesn't have the money, you know, he doesn't have the money to like remount the show. Um, so what would they do? They would use the existing costumes they have and just <laughs> cover them in rhinestones. You know yeah. what I mean? Like get as many sequins and rhinestones and spray on glitter that you can and, and cover them because they wouldn't have the money to completely reproduce a costume. Right. Um, so that's kind of where we went with it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we were also really inspired by um, Little Shop of Horrors and, and that kind of like campy, like this mix of like camp and reality. And then we also wanted to poke a little bit of fun in a way at, you know, musical costume design, right. and like go, go really far with it like ridiculous, like make everything sparkly and everything, you know, over the top. We, you know, I spent, I don't know how many man hours hand, hand stoning shoes. Oh my gosh. In, which is, I love doing. It's so fun, but, right. um, but quite yeah. the task though. Yes. Quite the task. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned too, when Oliver realizes what this, you know, production needs to become, there's that fun, a little Fosse montage 
dream sequence that we get that's i feel like it's too short i need a whole episode of it (laughs) that that was my only thing like when i watched the season back i was like oh i just wish there were i wish like we could have just like almost like music videos of like right just the musical parts maybe just like hulu needs to do like a limited just hour-long yeah. production yeah just, yeah there you go you know we reuse the costumes we're fine yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that was really fun all the yeah we had so a lot of mabel's costumes this season were designed by or designed by were inspired by um fossey uh you know productions different fossey productions um and yeah that scene specifically was um was so fun to design and to see to see steve and selena in those looks you know something <laughs> we, we don't ever get to do on the show so that was really fun yeah that was one of my favorite parts i was sitting up in my on my couch just like so thrilled like oh this is fun yeah um so i've heard you talk before about how clueless was very integral to your trajectory into gain into costume design so then comes Ben Glenroy, played by Paul Rudd, which I can imagine must have been quite exciting. <laughs> um, he is a self-centered movie star, and you you definitely get to know him in this season as he goes through quite a lot. And you also see, see some of his films, such as Girl Cop, which I found, found to be hilarious. So what was it like working with this character? Um, it was so fun. We I This was my second time working with Paul. Um, we did a movie together um, called They Came Together many years ago. And right. um, so it was great to work with him again. And I think, you know, actually when we did that movie, it, it was a, it's a movie with him and Amy Poehler and it's kind of poking fun at um, rom-coms mm-hmm. and um, directed by David Wayne. And um, in that movie, he's playing like an archetype of like every man that's in a rom-com. And that's, you know, and he he does that, like he has that look a lot. He does that look yeah. a lot. Um, and he kind of, I remember back in, when we did that movie, he, you know, we had him in like a button down pattern shirt and a crew neck sweater and some jeans and some <laughs> boots. And he was like, this is basically the costume I wear and everything. And yeah. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, so I really, so that when I, you know, read his character and read who he was and, and I kind of was like, I really want to do something different. Like I want to give Paul a look that he's never done before. He's never really won before. Um, so we kind of went with this, like, you know, rock a little slightly rocker, like a bit John Barbados in there. Um, you know, and he's just like this very self-centered, you know, actor, who's kind of mean to everyone around him. And, and, um, and we wanted him to look, we, we were inspired by not that, Oh my God, not that he's this way. I've never worked with him. <laughs> he's lovely, but we were inspired by um, off duty Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't know if you've ever like studied them, but. Um, I wouldn't say studied, but I get the reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're very fascinating. It'll be like, it'll be like jeans. And like a blaze, like a beat up kind of blazer that he's probably had for a while and a t-shirt, yeah. but then paired with like a hiking boot. Right. You're like, what's, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting um, combination of things. So that was one of our um, inspirations. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, he wanted like finger tattoos and we were like, yeah, let's get, let's give you a, like a wallet chain. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and yeah, we like, yeah, we, pup, we punk rocked him up a bit and. Yeah, we just had a lot of fun with it. It was great. It was so fun. <laughs> it's yeah. such a fun character. And then I remember at one point last year when I heard the news that one Meryl Streep was going to be joining the cast. I was just, I thought about you immediately. I was like, okay, well, you know, here comes <laughs> another great season. Oh uh, Meryl Streep plays Loretta Durkin, a seasoned actress who has waited decades for her moment in the spotlight. So what did you want to convey about Loretta and her life through costumes? And I will say, I noticed that she also enjoys a scarf, much like uh, (laughs) our dear Oliver. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. We had them be scarf twinsies, which was very fun. Um, Yeah. Loretta, you know, working with Meryl is a dream come true, as you could imagine. I can't, I can't imagine actually. (laughs) You know, it's just, you have to sort of disengage your brain and just do your do your job. Turn it and, off. Yeah, turn it, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's so lovely. And um, and I loved what we kind of came up with for her character. We, you know, we always John Hoffman, our showrunner, and Meryl and I had a Zoom early on and um, you know, talked about what we what we thought her look might be. And I think 
where the original inspiration came from was that this character, Loretta, is kind of the sliding doors version of Meryl Streep's life. You know, it's yeah. like if she wouldn't have made it, you know, like if just Meryl didn't make it and she just kind of, um, you know, kept, but but loved acting so much and loved performing and just kind of kept hitting the pavement and kept trying to make it happen for herself, but never wow. really made it big. And so we looked back at images of what Meryl was wearing in the 70s and like late 60s, 70s, early 80s. And um, we're like, you know, what if her style was just sort of arrested in that moment? Wow. Um, so that was kind of the original idea for her costume design was kind of uh, kind of these. I had this beautiful image of her where she's wearing like a tall boot with like a midi length a line skirt and a blazer and a blouse and I don't know the the colors were all very like kind of autumnal but with a bit of like jewel tone in there as well and so yeah that was the first inspiration wow it's kind and of dark and Meryl, I love it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when Meryl and I talked about it um she loved that original idea and then you know she and I kind of came up with this other part that was like you know she's she's given up everything in her life to dedicate herself fully to acting. So she's like the most hardcore when it comes to being an actor. Right. And, um, and in, in that, how she dresses herself is either it, it's kind of two things. It's either like completely blank slate, like she's wearing just like all black or, you know, something very simple, just like jeans and a, you know, button down, like a very simple button down shirt. So that, when she's at a rehearsal or at an audition, she can kind of become anything, you know, it's like giving yourself a blank slate so that you can take on whatever character right. or so that her closet's made of those kinds of pieces, these like blank slate pieces, or there are pieces in her closet that she's kind of taken from different productions she's been part of. And they're mm -hmm. very characterful. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of these pieces that, um, you know, you could even, you know, we were saying as we would do a fitting, we'd be like, oh, this is something you took from like an Ibsen production you were in, or this is something from a Chekhov production you were in, or this is very Shakespearean, you know, yeah. so all these plays that she's been in, all these roles she's had, um, she's taken pieces of those characters with her. So yeah, it was a kind of an interesting combination of like very characterful pieces, very simple pieces. Um, I think it turned out really cool. Yeah. The look. <laughs> um, I, I, I love the backstory too, all these yeah. little connections too. It just really shows that you and your your crew really just put thought into every little piece, even though there's I have to say a lot of characters in this series. So it's probably a lot to keep all these <laughs> all these different storylines going. It is. Well, that's I mean, and that's something you know that I definitely need to talk about is that I have an amazing team and yeah. like I'm one person and we have like a 17 person team or something like that. And, um, everyone I could, oh my God, I could, I, I lean on my assistant designers very heavily and they are very talented and amazing and help me out so much because it's true. It's like, you know, I can only focus my energies on, we have, we have so many amazing people on the show. And so I focus on, you know, maybe five to 10 actors and then they're <laughs> focusing on, you know, the rest <laughs> and it's a lot. Gosh, well, a costume designer is only as good as their crew and you are amazing. So it's a big shout out to them as well. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So uh, one other question that Elizabeth sent for me to ask, she said one of the season's funniest moments for her was watching Mabel running through New York with Charles and Oliver in Texas to the courthouse for her gown. What was the overall look you wanted to achieve? Well, you learn that the gown was actually something that was given. It was um, Charles's girlfriend, Joy. It was <laughs> her mother's so it was supposed to be sort of a 1950s silhouette you know kind of yeah. gown uh wedding gown and um but of course we didn't get the script until maybe a week before we were shooting this and nice i don't know if you've ever had to order a wedding gown but they can take you know six to eight weeks to be <laughs> custom made and ordered and it can be quite difficult to um procure <laughs> and um you know, and, and then in the wedding shops, like they typically don't have like a large size run, you know, they kind of have what they have and they're sample ones and they're usually kind of, yeah. you know, so it was like, okay, find a 1950s wedding gown in two days. They're not making multiples to run through the streets of yeah, New York. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, we knew we wanted a 50s sort of silhouette. Um, so we kind of just ran around and just tried to find what we could find. And we ended up actually finding something from David's bridal. 
Nice. <laughs> that was like my first guess. But I thought that it would be hilarious. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But then of course we did our costume magic to it and we replaced the lining. The lining was kind of this like really overly bright white, almost blue intense fabric that made it look very new. And so we just yeah. took that out, replaced it with something a little more of an off white to give it more of an antique, you know, look. Oh, great. Um, and, and yeah, and then paired it with some sweet gloves and, you know, I think, um, trying to remember what kind of, yeah, we just, we kind of tried to make the other pieces that she was wearing with it a little more leaning towards the 1950s to give it that vibe. And then of course she's running around. So we thought it would be cute if she was wearing her classic Mabel chunky boots so yeah. we put it with her boots. <laughs> I love it. It's such a great look. <laughs> so funny. Um, and there's two other characters I want to talk about because they really caught my eye when I saw them. It is uh, the producers of Deaf Rattle Dazzle, uh, Donna and Clifford. I'm a big fan of Linda Edmond, uh, Linda Emmond. Uh, she is just so fabulous. And they both have looks that tell you exactly who they are, I believe, when you see them. You're like, oh, I know who they are. Um, so what are your inspirations for these two characters? So they were inspired by a real, and I'm, I can't believe that I'm forgetting their names right now but it has been a year Yeah, that's and I'm pregnant. So my brain doesn't work as well, but, <laughs> um, but they were inspired by a real mother and son, uh, theater producer team. Mm. Um, and gosh, I have to Google it. Is that okay? Can I do that? Yeah, really? No, you're fine. Is that what it is? Jordan, yes. Jordan Roth figured it out. Okay. Is, that's okay. one of the two, right? Jordan Roth. That is the son. <laughs> um, Daryl. I think Daryl is his mother. Anyways, the Roths, the Roths, mother <laughs> and son, below the Roths. They are fabulous, and um, and that is what we that's what those characters were inspired by. And um, you know, we wanted we wanted Donna to be this like badass New York woman who mm -hmm. doesn't take anything from anyone, and um, we wanted her to be this kind of Upper East Side. You know, she has a lot of money, but she's also like, she's there to work. She's there to grind and she's there to like, we didn't want her to feel too um, conservative or, you know what I mean? She's, she's still a theater person. Yeah. Um, and so we had so much fun going wild, <laughs> wild with her costumes. And then her son, Cliff, um, you know, you don't know much about him besides the fact that they're both just like, you know, these theater lovers and that. Cliff, I you, I think at one point maybe you learned that he has a background in dance. And so there are these really hilarious moments where he pulls off these amazing dance moves and flips. He just randomly flips <laughs> in scenes. Um, but yeah, we we went really crazy with his costumes as well and had a, a really fun time designing that. Um, and yeah, we just wanted them to be very theatrical yeah. and um, and showy. You know, that's that's who they are as people. Yeah. Right. Such a fun duo and yeah. such a fun yeah. show. Dana, this has been such a joy. And like I said, I've been looking forward to speaking to you for a while and it was well worth the wait. So just looking back at everything you and your crew have achieved on Only Murders in the Building, what has this series meant to you? Has I mean you're yeah. working on season four right now. I mean, two Emmy nominations. It's it's incredible. What has it meant to you? I mean, it's been it's been everything. It's been it's been such a um Again, I feel so, so, so grateful um, to have worked on this job and, and to, to keep working on it. And I hope we get, you know, a million more seasons. Yeah. You know, Marty always jokes that we'll just keep doing it until Steve doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> um, so hopefully he'll keep wanting to do it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, I can't even, there are no words to describe how, uh, how amazing it is to work on it. Like truly, truly love everyone. I, you know, my crew, of course, given that they are all amazing and I love them. And then, you know, I've never before worked on a job where like every single crew is amazing and the showrunners are amazing. The producers are amazing and the actors are so kind and so wonderful and so talented. And um, yeah, you just really couldn't ask for a better job. You know, it's, it's like perfectly, it's very creative you're allowed to be a little silly because it's a comedy, but yeah. it's also very grounded in character. So yeah, as a costume designer, it's a, I really think it's a once in a lifetime. Yeah. It, it's so exciting. And I'm just on the edge of my seat, 
getting ready to figure out what Mabel's thing will be next season yeah, or what I'm the really new theme it, is. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited. Dana Covarubias, thank you so much. This has been such a joy and congratulations on a lot of many different things. So I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. fun it was so fun i love dana she's so cool and i mean i love a musical i love a musical i love a whole season based on musicals and i also love when uh, there's lots of subtle references in the costumes the fact that yeah you could just there's a different theme to mabel's costumes every season whether it be hitchcock or you know even like phantom of the opera and little shop of horrors i love that and I'm just dying to know what it's going to be in season four. Right. It's just, it's so cool. And just like her attention to the detail. I'm like, that's incredible. And I, her talking about creating <laughs> death rattle dazzle. <laughs> like it was so much fun. Wish she had talked about the crab people more, <laughs> but like, <laughs> it's just like this is just such a wild concept yeah a show literally the only other time i've seen anything close to this was did you watch um smash back in the day i did not no and like it only got like two seasons but it was literally about it was about people producing broadway shows oh um, gotcha. and that was the only thing close that i've ever seen but this was like even better than that it was so much better than that <laughs> it's fun and i just like the fact that she works with these stars i mean meryl yeah. streep paul rudd steve martin i mean martin short it just it keeps going and i just like i can't imagine the pressure and it just looks spectacular and cohesive and it also like she also has such a great sense of style her and her crew i should say like they all have such like a great sense of style too in the casual moments, but then could also like totally put together a Broadway production if they wanted oh, to, which yeah. they did. Yeah. Such a great sense of style. And also like, I feel like she brings in trendy elements while still being pretty timeless. Like, I feel like I'll be able to watch this in like 10 years and yeah. still feel like there's a level of contemporariness to it. And, but then also be like, I remember when that was popular. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so, Elizabeth, how many stitches would you give oh, Only Murders in the Building? Oh, Only Murders in the Building is a five out of five stitch production. <laughs> the cast, the costumes, the sets. The sets on the show are incredible. Like, the story, it just, season after, and also Spencer when you when you're able to like cohesively watch this <laughs> in order in order yeah. <laughs> the way each season rolls into the next because i hate cliffhangers mm -hmm. this show has cliffhangers and it works it Ooh. works like you're okay. not you're not annoyed because in w most shows when that when there's a cliffhanger i'm annoyed I'm like, Sir like we could not have wrapped this up. <laughs> but the, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I need the next season. Like it's yeah. it's such a flawless show. I love it. Yeah. Five out of five stitches. This garment is not coming apart. Five out of five. And she's solid on that. That is the first five out of five, I believe. Um, and I got to say, I mean, from what I've seen, I've only really seen like all of season three. And from what Elizabeth's said i can't really do anything other than give it five out of five stitches because all i've seen is perfection so far so it's fun it's funny it still has true crime murder i love a murder mystery the cast is a plus the production i said in the interview that you know uh, we've talked about this before i have serious coat envy i wish i could live in cooler climates and wear coats all the time and this show is like prime suspect number one. It almost makes me want to move to New York. I just want to experience it for like a, a year, maybe. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. 
And it's just fun. And I love just the musical element of this. It just makes you, yeah, just, it's so much fun. Five out of five stitches. That's an easy one. So, uh, but we also got to play our, our other favorite game. I guess we have two favorite games now, but. Oh, yeah. Let, let's do it, Daniel. The one costume to rule them all. Spencer. What was your one costume to rule them all? Mine was easy. I knew it the second I <laughs> saw it. It was the Bob Fosse cabaret type uh, musical number that just happens randomly when <laughs> you see Selena and Steve Martin and these cabaret type looks. It's just so much fun. And I, that that was like the moment I knew I was like, oh, I'm really going to love this yeah. show because it keeps you on your toes mm -hmm. and done effortlessly. It was just oh, a small yeah. musical number and it just happened so flawlessly. Uh, that was an easy one for me. That was that was such a great moment this season. It was yeah. so funny. So perfect. <laughs> but personally, I got to say. My one costume costumes, I will say, to rule them all was the Death Rattle Dazzle <laughs> costumes, mm, <yeah>. particularly <laughs> uh, Steve Martin and uh, Meryl Streep. Like that sequined cop, like constable <laughs> outfit. <laughs> th th yeah. Ridiculous. That is objectively <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and like Meryl Streets, just like very cute little like nanny like coat and little jaunty hat with just like the sequins like on the <laughs> on the lapel and her hat is at a ridiculous angle like yeah <laughs> it was just so insane and you're I'm like these costumes bring me joy so <laughs> they really do that's so true it's just it's like fun it's just good fun and i just love how i mean not that i've ever felt like steve martin is like too serious he's obviously one of the greatest comedians of all time oh yeah and the fact that you would throw this on and it's just you know it's just so much fun you could tell that everyone just has like such a good time oh, being yeah. on the show oh yeah it's it's perfect it's joyous that's perfect. You you all heard it here. Uh, Elizabeth, this was such a fun, fun show. I really want to get back into all of Only Murders in the Building. And I'm excited to know that uh, Dana was working on season four when I talked to her. I believe actually she was in the final days. Yeah, yeah, um, I think so. So it's, it's coming back and we'll have to, hopefully we could have her back on and Elizabeth could be there to say all this to her face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait for that day. Well, if you all want to tell us what your one costume rule them all was, leave us a voicemail at 626-515-1826. Let me remind you, that's just a voicemail box. You don't have to talk to us on the phone unless you want to, but we don't answer. It's just a voicemail box. So tell us what your one costume rule them all was or email us at the art of costume at gmail.com. Elizabeth Hot Girl Summer is ongoing and we are doing something actually very different in our next episode. What are we watching? You all have wanted a classic movie from us. So we are giving you a hot girl classic with one of the hot girls of the 20th century next week we will be watching funny face starring audrey hepburn with costumes by objectively the queen of costume design in the 20th century edith head wow i i cannot believe that we are four seasons in. we have not done a classic hollywood film as such and we have not I don't think we've talked about Audrey Hepburn or Edith Head. So I don't think so. <laughs> I'm excited. I am very excited for this, really. I've actually never seen Funny Face either. So I'm ready to get into it. I have not seen Funny Face either. So <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> It'll be fun for you and I. Um, I I hope you all listen. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the art of costume. Instagram at the Art of Costume Pod, TikTok at the Art of Costume, 
hit up our merch store at theartofcostume.com slash pod store. I actually just got a new t-shirt this week. I wore it at Comic-Con. Yes. So, um, you know, it's all black, but it still has our logo on it. It looks so cute and it's a nice fabric. Um, and as always, leave us a five-star text review on Apple Podcasts so we can read those reviews on a podcast. And, uh, you know, we really want to hear what you have to say because it helps us plan the direction of the show. Elizabeth, this has been a lot of fun. I feel like I need to go get my, I don't know, magnifying glass and start doing some true crime detecting. True crime detecting. Find the references in each episode. Yeah. Find some clues. (laughs) Whatever you do. Elizabeth, it's been so good to see you as always. You as well, Spencer. Everyone, have a fantastic week. The Art of Costume podcast is hosted and produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Our audio engineering and editing is done by Dan White. Follow us on TikTok at The Art of Costume and Instagram at The Art of Costume Pod. If you want to support the show, go to theartofcostume.com slash podstore. For more podcast updates, costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, go to theartofcostume.com, a blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design.